Good day, fellow investors. You already know Perry Enster, Professor Perry Enster, who is now retired, lives in beautiful Malaysia with great weather, and he watches our channel. And one of his greatest concerns is about the retail investor. So he wished to discuss that a little bit. And what is that a retail investors like we are here on the channel has to be really concerned about and watch and not to get let's say, in trouble over his investing lifetime. So thank you, Per, for sharing this with us. Well, I, I, I did not actually uh, prepare some specific uh, agenda for talking about retail investors, but one of my concerns after quite a long life of, of watching people oftentimes with, with hard earnings, etc., trying to save up for retirement, for their children's education, for circumstances where their health may not be good, or just simply to buy a new car, a new, uh, new house, is, is um, my pet peeve with sort of the banking system. Mm -hmm. I, I just seen too many uh, people, uh, you know, that goes down to their, uh, their, their own bank. They're called bank advisors, but in many ways, I would rather call them salesmen. Mm -hmm. they, were, they would try to sell these fairly unfortunate, ignorant people about investing and convince them to put you know, sizable amounts of money into often um, investment vehicles that really benefits most of all the bank, not, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah, not yeah, the retail yeah. investor. So, so um, my biggest concern or is also, you know, the uh, retail investors, uh, because of maybe the lack of education, uh, have so, poor ability to evaluate what is actually right for me and what, mm -hmm. what is worthwhile for me to actually do. Yeah. And, and um, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't think banks and, and also a lot of pension funds are not particularly healthy, uh, helpful in that respect. In fact, to the contrary, you often see that people get into investment products that uh, really they shouldn't have because it's not the best way. And we're not talking, in some cases, of course, we're talking about you know, a few hundred dollars or euros. But many times we're talking about people putting you know, 30, 50, 100, 200,000 dollars and more into a scheme based on a very, very, um, uh, uh, very, very uh, poor foundation. Uh, a foundation, for instance, they would never buy a new car yeah. uh, without having done good research. They would never buy a a new house without having uh, studied it properly or, and talked with different people. But when they sit down with a bank advisor or a broker, they are often convinced to saying, oh, I think you need to be in some FANG stock or Apple is a good investment. We recommend you know, to do uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, and they don't know why, but they put a lot of their hard earned money uh, into the hands of some, and sometimes I would say dubious sort of schemes or at least excessively expensive uh, schemes. And, and to me, this is something that, uh, and one of the reasons why, as you know, I'm, I'm very fond of your channel because I think in, in, it makes uh, more investment um, knowledge available to a larger number of people. And I, I think this can only be healthy. As, a, an, as an educator, I really wish, for instance, schools, uh, high schools, yeah. would do a better job of actually teaching people, uh, the, uh, students, about some of these, in some sense, very simple things, you know, compounding interest, et cetera, et cetera, so that when students could go out in life, they would actually be more knowledgeable about some of these things. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. And, and um, so this is one of the things that I, uh, I wish was a little different, um, and I wish that uh, maybe there was better consumer protection around some of these things. That uh, you know, people actually knew what is it, for instance, if they invest, go to the bank and invest the money in a fund run by the the bank. How much money does the bank actually yeah. charge for all of these services? Because yes, you see some of them, but there are a lot of these uh, expen uh, expenses or costs you, you don't really see. They are not visible. Yeah. It's not to say that, of course, uh, running a bank and running a fund it takes some cost, and you know, the um, uh, salaries need to be paid. But I think people need to be much more aware of what it is, and we need to have more transparency in that matter. Uh, and and this is one of the reasons why I think both Peter and I 
although I don't think consider us retail investors, but one reason, for instance, we uh, went ahead and, and started a fund because we, we just didn't feel comfortable about the kind of services, even uh, with, with, with our assets, that we could get in, in most typical banks because uh, we always felt that we would be, or attempts would be made to steer us into uh, investments that was really not in our best interest. How is now? How can our person that I don't know? For example, I get a lot of emails from an MDs, so they really work hard at their job of making us live longer, saving our lives, and they do. We all know twelve-hour shifts or something like that, and then they have that one free day, and they go to get a cup of co coffee with their banker for an hour. So how are they supposed to behave? Okay. How to know, how to protect themselves from... Uh well, well, first of all, I, I think that is probably going to be the most expensive cup of coffee they are ever going to buy. <laughs> um, but I, 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 there, there's several options. First of all, I think educating yourself. You, so you have it's to educate little, yourself yeah, about... Yeah, I, I mean, it's not... I wouldn't compare it with maybe buying a car. But if you want to buy a new car, you tend to actually do some research. You yeah, talk yeah. with other people who have bought uh, this particular brand of car. You maybe read some, uh, um, uh, some articles in motor magazines. You may go to Consumer Report and, and see comparisons, etc. Uh, other considerations may be, you know, can I have this car serviced in my area? Is there garages around that will do that, etc., etc.? What is the resale value and so forth? And I think similarly with, with investments, uh, uh, that you do as an MD or another hardworking person, you need to educate yourself. You do a, need to do a better job. Of course, when you invest your money with other people, it's always a matter of trust. Yeah. And I guess what, what, uh, what I'm highlighting here is that the perceived trust sometimes in these institutions, whether they're brokers, insurance uh, you know, advisors, etc., is tainted. There, there, there's, there's a there's a bias yeah. here that not is likely not in your favor. And you need to understand that. I'm not saying that a, uh, a medical doctor needs to go through and become an economist suddenly. But in the same way, I, I don't think the medical doctor would recommend that I uh, start to prescribe medicine. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's the same way you, 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 you can actually, uh, you can get a hold of independent advisors. Now you need to pay them. Yeah. Uh, amazingly enough, people tend to be really hesitant of actually paying you know, three, five hundred dollars for somebody to sit down and review their their their, their portfolio yeah, yeah. or their investments. But they don't mind you know investing you know three, four, five hundred thousand person with a with a young bank bank clerk because he says we re recommend Fang stocks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so I, I think also people need to be more. Um, they, they need to be a little bit more um, alert uh, and realistic in terms of their own maybe lack of understanding yeah. and what they are getting f for things that are free. Uh, so what you're practically saying also what, what any investor before investing in something should do, should ask a variety of person, persons independent, okay, what can be the good thing about that investing but what is the worst case scenario yeah. and then put it in a personal life perspective but the key is that you know what i think when you go to a bank is not that common that they will say okay this is the upside and this is the worst case scenario put that into your life perspective would be a good start for example yeah i i, I think you need to be very, very realistic this morning i just read about uh um uh, one of these famous actors who had gained $650 million by making a, a, a movie and now the guy is bankrupt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, it actually takes real hard work to, you know, um, lose, 600. lose $650 <laughs> million. <laughs> I'm sort of thinking to myself, what can I actually do to, to, to spend that much money in, in a relatively short period of time? I think it, it all starts with education. Yeah. You've got to educate yourself. So. So you can go and ask some other, uh, some people who are more knowledgeable, but you need to have a certain level of education so you at least can s ask the question and you have some sense of what the responses are. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that people need to be able to you know, calculate free cash flow or calculate net present value, etc. 
but they need to at least have some sense of what it is that uh, one they are looking for themselves and what the recommendations actually might be and the different options that they may have. And where can people get that education? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm a big fan of your channel. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I, no, because I think you're doing a very good job of that. Right. Uh, other places I've recommended to uh, members in my family go to Khan Academy, mm -hmm. KhanAcademy.org. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, they, they actually have little videos that actually talk about some of these things. Uh, um, just starting to uh, read the financial press on a regular basis so we start to get used to the vocabulary, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying you need to go back to school and get a new degree. But Investing is a lifelong process, it's so you have a life to learn about and, it. And, and there, there, there are always things you start to, to yeah. discover where you thought maybe if I invest this way I'll be you know, more fortunate. And then you see, well, but there was also these other variables that I need to take into consideration. And of course, different economic circumstances allow for yeah, very yeah. different types of, of strategies. And then when you think about it, on average we spend 200 not we, but most people spend 200 hours working on their job to get money, but perhaps spend less than half an hour per month thinking about that money. Yeah. So you don't need to put 200 hours per month, but perhaps that 15 minute increase it to one hour, two hour per month as an investment over 50 years that compounds to huge differences. It's very important. Um, uh, I, I can tell you uh, in my, my role as a uh, as an executive educator, I've, I've actually come across quite a lot of even CEOs, very high-ranking officers in companies that are great at managing their own their company, but they are very, very amateurish when it comes to actually thinking about their own money. Yeah, uh, uh. Uh, another thing that uh, a lot of people don't really consider is oftentimes the tax implications of their investments. It's sort of like sometimes you, you consider taxes forgiven. Well, that's actually not always the case. There are certain ways you can actually set up your, your portfolio and the way you make investments that actually may um, create advantages uh, as opposed to maybe having to pay a lot in taxes. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not advocating against taxes. If people choose to live in high welfare societies, they of course need to pay uh, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of taxes. But I think from your own por portfolio point of view, you still need to consider it because over time, over the years, even small percentages in tax differences will actually yield very, yeah. very different yeah. results in the future. And that's of course why it, it, it actually pays off to also think about your, your tax situations uh, yeah. when, when, when you're thinking about investments. So the options are then relo relocating? Well, I, I'm not even uh, going that yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'm just thinking about the different ways of actually doing it. Most countries, for instance, would like to encourage uh, you know, um, uh, people to save for old age, etc. And that will be very uh, important. Like we United have the United States and the retirement accounts. Yeah, exactly. So, so di there are different ways of doing that. Yeah. Now, of course, you should do some of that, but you should not do it without also looking at what are the kind of instruments and what are the yields yeah, you are likely yeah, yeah. to expect from different instruments. Sometimes people tend to let the tax issue completely overshadow Everything the way they else. think about yeah, the investments. Yeah, yeah. And so um, spend the time because you have worked hard for your money and uh, don't just hand it over to any, uh, any sort of, uh, I wouldn't call them charlatans because obviously they're there and they're, uh, they're paying good, uh, uh, they're, 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 um, they're there for a purpose, but sometimes when you go to a broker or you go to a bank or you go to an insurance salesman, his incentives are not completely aligned yeah, with your yeah, interests. Yeah. So it's always good to be a skeptical listener in, yeah, in these circumstances. Excellent. Well, thank you, Per. I think uh, this is a lot of food for thought for our viewers, especially the newer viewers that are looking for how to invest and what to be careful when investing. So it's just the message is give yourself time, learn about it, and the difference over 50, 60 years will be amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Pert, and thanks Thank for you. doing this. Pleasure. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.